Good day class, so welcome to our discussion. So for today, we will be discussing le lesson 3, Perform Estimation and Basic Calculation. So for our objectives, at the end of the lesson, you should be able to follow procedure in reporting to appropriate persons, the estimate of materials and resources, perform estimations or calculations to be done according to the job requirement, and employ different techniques in checking accuracy of result. So before we proceed, let's have this definition of terms. First, we have the area. It refers to the size of the surface. Fertilizer is any material added to the soil to support nutrient. Gross income or sales, the equivalent value of the product sold. The interest is the corresponding value that will be added to the principal as payment for using money of the lender. And net income is the value remains after all expenses have been deducted from the gross income or sales. So before we proceed, let's take this test. So I have I will be presenting three questions and let's identify what is being asked. Okay, first, it is a record that is kept by the farmer that shows the budget of the project. It is called Is it cash? Let's see. Yes, very good. It is cash. Next, what record tells the farmer how much he or she gained in the venture? Is it production? Let's see. No, it's not. How about sales? Very good. That is sales. Last one. What can be found in the production record report? Is it miscellaneous fees? Oh, it's not. How about the profit earned? It's not. How about the expenses paid? Very good. It is the expenses paid. If you got 3 over 3, then congratulations. So, let's now continue our discussion. So the car production enterprise is an important source of food and employment around the world. Agriculture is the basis of an economy by which almost all types of businesses are anchored in. So as a farmer, estimation is part of our lives. We estimate materials and resources, the profit, the price, and many more. So bakit nga ba napakahalaga na magkaroon tayo ng ganitong kaalaman? Dito natin malalaman kung magkano nga ba ang ginagastos nating pera at magkano naman ang ating kinikita. Masasabi natin dito kung ang ating bang ipinatanim ay dapat pa natin ipagpatuloy or hindi. Okay? So kaya tara na at simulan ng ating discussion. So bago tayo magsimula, bago tayo mag-estimate, kailangan pamilyar muna tayo sa dalawang uri na dalawang uring ito. Farm input at ang farm labor. Ang farm input ay ang resources that are used in farm production. This is most uh, most commonly purchased. While the farm labor are the activities happened in a farm. So tatandaan nyo, ang farm input ay yung mga ginagamit natin sa farm production. Madalas dito ay consumables at ating binibiling. Samantalang ang farm labor from the word itself, labor, Ito yung mga nangyayari sa ating farm or garden. Okay pa? So, ang farm input sa halimbawa nito ay ang mga seeds, ang seedlings, lagayan, ang far, uh, fertilizers, and insecticides. While farm labor, ito naman ay halimbawa ng labor requirement for land preparation. Halimbawa dito ay ang pag-araro gamit ang tractor. Ang clearing the land using hoe, plowing using animal, harrowing using hand tractor, preparation of a furrow, trellis preparation for cucurbit crops. Yung trellis ay yung mga uh, fence na ginagamit natin at yung mga cucurbit crops ay yung mga gumagapang na halaman. Halimbawa nito, melon, kalabasa, uko, diba? at marami pang iba. So, we have also the mulching. Mapapansin nyo, sa mulching, 
yung mga tinanim natin ay tinatakpan ng isang uh, plastic cover. Kung hindi man plastic, pwede tayong gumamit ng organic materials and digging holes for orchard. Diba? So, farm labor, ito naman yung ginagamit sa planting of pagtatanim. We have the production of seedlings and the transplanting. While for plant care, we have the application of a fertilizer and the pest control. Irrigation ay ginagamit din natin para makontrol yung amount ng tubig na kinakailangan papunta sa ating palayan. At ang weeding, yung pagtanggal ng mga unwanted plants from the ground. And harvesting, of course, yung pagtuha ng mga bunga ng ating itinanim. Okay? So, yan ang mga halimbawa ng farm inputs and farm labor na ating kakailanganin maya-maya lamang sa pag-estimate. Okay? So, ano nga ba yung mga report na kinakailangan nating ihanda? So, report, ito ay nagpapakita ng mga figura sa entrepreneur kung ang negosyo ba ay dapat nating ituloy, dapat ba nating palakihin, at dapat ba nating i-declare for bankruptcy. Ito rin, ito rin ay nagsisilbing gabay para sa decision making ng isang business. Ito rin ay tumutulong sa paglaki ng kita at mabawasan ng hindi kaaya-aya o hindi mahalagang gastos. At ito rin ay ginagamit upang maiwasan ang pagkalugi at mas lalo pang mapalago ang employee productivity, job satisfaction, enhanced production, efficiency, to improve management of the business. So yan ang kahalagahan ng paggawa ng isang report. In short term, business report will help you decipher the smallest, the biggest aspect of your business if it is conducive for greater profit. So ano nga ba yung mga kadalasang report na ginagamit natin sa crop production? We have first, the cash record. So cash record, this is a record of cash accounts in a project. It can be seen in one record or this may be special cash record where in the cash receipt journal and cash payments journal are separately recorded transactions. So ito ang halimbawa ng isang cash, rec uh, cash record. Kung makikita nyo, meron siyang date. Ito yung mga natanggap nating pera. At ito naman yung mga lumabas na pera galing sa atin. So pansinin, kaya na, pansinin natin ito. So, yung nakuha natin pera ay 8,000 pesos galing sa pagbenta ng 10 kaban ng palay. So, nagkakahalaga ng 800 pesos per kaban kaya nakakuha tayo ng 8,000 pesos. Samantalang, ang lumabas naman pera sa atin ay 4,400 dahil ito ay ipinambayad natin sa walong sako ng 14-14-14 fertilizers na nagkakahalaga naman ng 550 per bag. So, ito ay alimbawa ng cash record. Next, farm sales record. Ang farm sales record naman used to record all sales in price production. So, meron dalawang halimbawa ng farm sales record. Una, ang general form na may only one amount column where the value of farm produce sold is recorded. And the classified farm sales record that contains special amounts or special columns for the main product of the farm stock record. So, ito naman ang halimbawa ng farm sales record. Next, we have the stock record. Stock record shows the stock of supplies and materials needed by the farm in all farming activities. So, aside from the date, item columns, the stock record has three main columns, namely the received, issued, and balance column. Ang receive issue, uh, receive column ay nagpapakita ng quantity, unit price, and the total amount of the materials received. And the issue column is the quantity or shows the quantity used. While the balance column shows the materials or supplies which are unused. The stock record is helpful in determining how much supplies and materials are needed per crop. So, ito ang halimbawa ng stock record. So, iyang nakikita nyong RC, yan ang receive column, 
yung issue column naman ay ito, while the balance column naman ay this last part. Okay? So, that is the stock record. Next is the production record. Production record determines the annual profitability. So, this record summarizes the performance of the farm in each year. So, it can be used by the farmer in determining which crop is performed well or which is not. It can be the basis of the farmer in deciding what crop has to be maintained or which one is supposed to be changed. Okay? So, dito natin makikita ano ba yung dapat natin ipagpatuloy na mga pananim at ano naman yung mga pananim na hindi na pumikita at pwede natin paltan. Okay? So, the cross, uh, cost and profit analysis. Cost and profit analysis tells the farmer how much profit he or she will gain for the project undertaken. So, it contains a list of all the farming activities that were done in a season and the expenses incurred for per, uh, per farming activity. It also indicates the cost of supplies and materials used for the cropping season. The cost and return analysis helps the farmer to get the total cost of production and estimate the net return he or she will gain depending on the crop yield or the mode of production. Okay? So, ito naman ang halimbawa ng cost and profit analysis. So, tatandaan, ang net income, ang formula niyan ay the income minus the goods sold, expenses, interest, taxes, and many more. So, halimbawa, we have the total sales of 10,500 pesos. Let's minus it uh, with the cost of production that is 3,500 pesos. So, meron tayong net income na 7,000 pesos. Okay po? So, yun ang cost and profit analysis. So, nas lalo pa nating uh, palaguin ang ating kaalaman tungkol sa mga record na ito. So, let's try to analyze the production and the profit that we that our business will gain. Okay? So, the following table shows the sample cost and return analysis in rice production for 1 hectare lowland and irrigated rice. So, so, ang method ng planting natin ay transplanting kasi ito ay wet season. So, ano ba yung variety ng rice na ating gagamitin? So, ito yung high yield uh, variety for HYV na kung saan seeds are developed by a scientist to improve food supplies and decrease famine. Ito rin yung tinatawag natin lyrical seeds because it can produce up to 10 times more crops than regular seed. Okay? So, ang ginamit natin dito ay HYV rice. While the seeds, gumamit tayo ng 2 bag certified seeds at 1,200 pesos per sack. While the uh, soil condition is high and medium, NPK or the nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. So, ito yung test results niya. So, maganda naman yung kinalabasan ng test results. Okay? So, let's start our analysis. So, ito yung diniscuss natin kanina na farm inputs and farm labors. So, mapapansin nyo, bago tayo magtanim, bago tayo magkaroon, ma, magkaroon ng ani, so, kailangan muna natin ihanda ang ating land by flowing, harrowing, and through irrigation. Okay? So, this column, second column, makikita natin ang pieces. Ilang piraso ba ang ating gagamitin? Ilang sako? Ilang machine? Ilang tao ang ating kakailanganin? While this the unit, uh, this is the unit, number of days, ilang araw ba siya dapat gawin? How much per unit? And the total amount. So halimbawa, kailangan natin ng sampung tao para sa flowing sa loob ng isang araw. Ang isang tao ay nagkakahalaga, babayaran natin ng 450 pesos per 1,000 square meters. So, mumultiply lang natin yung 450 pesos sa 10, that is 4,500 pesos. Okay po? While sa Halloween, kailangan natin siyang tapusin in 2 days at tao rin ang kailang, isang tao rin ang kailangan nating arkilahin. Nagkakahalaga sila ng 300 pesos times 10, that's 3,000. So, that is for 2 days, so multiply by 2, so meron tayong gastos ng 6,000 pesos. 
Okay? So, sa loob ng limang araw, magkakaroon tayo ng gastos na 13,037.5 ah, 13, pesos. Okay? Para lamang yan sa land preparation. Okay? Kung mapapansin nyo, malaki na ang ating ginagastos. Makano kaya ang ating kikitain maya-maya lamang? Pangalawa, sa pagtatanim. So, kailangan natin mag-produce ng seedlings, gaya ng seeds, labor for planters, uh, planters yung kanilang pagkain, sa transplanting, yung pagkain ng magtatanim din. Okay? So, sa planting, meron tayong gastos na 13,650. The process is also the same with the previous table. Okay po? So, that is 13,650 pesos. Sa pangangalaga naman ng ating halaman, syempre, kailangan natin mag-apply ng fertilizer at ang pest and weed control. Kung ayaw yung gumastos ng ganitong kalakik, meron naman tayong alternative dito na tinatawag nating organic farming na kung saan ang ginagamit natin ay yung mga manure ng mga hayop o yung mga dumi ng mga hayop bilang fertilizers. Okay? So, ito naman ay halimbawa ng plant cure na kung saan gumamit ng complete 14-14-14 fertilizer ng urea, ammonium phosphate, murate of potash, foliar for fertilizer, labor for the applicator, nag-apply uh, nag ng fertilizer, at yung pagkain nila. So, all in all, nakagasos tayo ng 20,350 pesos para lamang sa pakangalaga ng ating mga pananim. Okay? So, that is for 3 days. Next, harvesting. Sa pag-harvest naman, syempre, kailangan nating magbayat doon sa labor ng harvesters, uh, renta doon sa treasure na kung saan ginagamit natin para makuha yung ani. Okay? So, that is for every six sacks of harvested rice. So, isang sack ay mapupunta doon sa grupo ng mga harvester. So, ang gastos natin dito ay 20,300 pesos. Kasama na yung uh, pambayad sa sako at doon sa tracking. Okay? Sa pag-deliver ng ating mga naani. Okay? Next. So, sa post-harvesting, syempre, kailangan muna natin patuyuin ang mga naani nating palay. So, gumamit tayo dito ng mechanical na rice dryer. Kung ayaw nyo naman gumamit ng mechanical, syempre may alternative yung nakikita natin sa mga probinsya, di ba? Inilalatag ang mga palay sa tabing kalsada para sila ay matuyo. So, kung ayaw nyo gumasas ng ganitong kalaki, pwede naman na through air dry or sun drying. Okay? So, sa rice milling, ang pagpapabayo kasama na rin doon. So, that is 7,200 pesos. Yung tracking, nagkakalaga na yung sandibo. At yung payment sa milling services ay 7,290. So, all in all, we have 14,490 pesos. So, magkano ang nagastos natin simula sa land preparation hanggang post-harvesting? So, nakagastos tayo ng... 81,827.50 centavos. Iba ang laki ng ginagastos. Next, so ano naman ang sales report? So, ito na ang ating sales report. So, magkano ba ang ating kinita? Okay? So, we have 123,120 pesos. So, yung formula dito sa uh, nabayong bigas, so, yung dried rice per kilogram times 2 divided by 3. So, alimbawa ay 4,860 kilogram times 2 divided by 3. So, we have 3,240 kilograms. So, multiply natin yung kilogram into kaban. Diba ang kaban, ang isang kaban ay ilan ang, ilang, uh, gano kabigat, ilang kilo. That is 50 kilos. So, yung kilo, i-divide natin sa 50 or kaban. Diba? So, we have 3,240 kilograms divided by 50. So, we have 64.8 kabans of rice. Okay? Ang presyo ng isang kaban ay 1,900 pesos multiplied by 64.8. So, we have 1,200 uh, 123,000 
120 pesos. So that's our sales report. So ano naman yung cost and profit analysis? Ang formula dito, yung kinita minus gastos equals profit. Okay? So if the answer is negative number, it only means that your business did not turn any profit. Tandaan nyo yan, kahit sa anong business. Kapag ang gastos mo, ang kinita mo, minus yung gastos, at ang lumabas na resulta ay negative, lugi ka doon. Okay? Ibig sabihin na nalugi ka. So, tingnan natin kung tayo ba ay nalugi dito sa ating ginawang estimation. So, magkano ang total cost natin? 81,827.50 centavos. Magkano ang sales? 123,120 pesos. I-divide nyo lang silang dalawa equals the profit. So, kumita tayo ng 41,292.50 centavos. Okay? So, dito natin napatunayan na tayo bilang consumers, we must learn to appreciate those who provided as food, especially yung mga farmers. Diba? So, nakita natin, sa nakita natin cost and profit analysis, dito natin napatunayan na hindi pala biro ang halaga na ginagastos ng ating mga magsasaka. Diba? Kung mapapansin nyo sa balita ngayon na umaaray ang mga ating magsasaka dahil, mahal, ah, dahil hindi ganun kamahal ang benta nila sa pante. Diba? So, if you... Kapag nakakita tayo ng mga magsasaka dyan, tandaan nyo, if you ate today, thank a farmer. Okay? So, wag na tayo magreklamo at tayo magpasalamat na lamang dahil tayo ay mayroong nakakain. Okay? So, wag nyo kakalimutang pasalamatan ng ating mga magsasaka. So, yun lamang po at maraming salamat.